All right, so now it's time to go ahead and set up Portage. The first thing we should do is get a snapshot from the web. So we'll do the emerge web sync command. It's going to download a recent Portage snapshot and go ahead and extract that. And the nice thing, it will even check the digest for you so you'll know it's accurate. Once it's done, you can go ahead and emerge sync if you want to have the very latest packages. But uh, for this tutorial, I want to go ahead and skip that. All right, now we need to choose a profile. So let's go ahead and look at our options. There are several of them. Generally, you want to go with the newest number here, but if it says EXP, that means experimental. I wouldn't recommend going to experimental profiles. So I'm going to stick with a 17.0 profile, and I'm just going to use the desktop one. So that's profile number 16. So E select profile set 16. If we list them again, we'll see there is an asterisk by that now. So we now have our correct profile set. All right. Um, since we're not using systemd, this step is optional, but you can emerge the packages that are already in here with your new use flags that have been configured based on the profile you set. But again, I'm going to skip that for now. And now it wants to figure the use variable. I'm also going to skip that for now. Um, if you go look into the use.desk file, you can see what kind of options there are. Generally, the profile has most of the default options people will want. There's only a few things you need to configure. All right, we're not going to use system D, so we're going to skip that. So the next step is to set up the time zone. So we can look at the possible time zones in this. And I see it looks like there's a U.S. Eastern, and that's where I am. So I'm going to echo U.S. Eastern into ETC time zone. And then we will run this configuration to actually make it work. Now we have to set up the locales we're going to support. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use the non-UTF and the UTF one, so Unicode and pre-Unicode. We'll run the locale gen. And finally, we will set up the locale we want to use. So our options are the C locale, ENUS, ENUS of the ISO, and ENUS of UTF-8. I'm going to go with UTF-8 because I like Unicode. So E select profile set four. Didn't mean that. Let's go back to 16. E select uh, locale set four. There we go. So now we need to update the environment variables, source our profile again, and get our ch root marker on there. All right, now we can go on to configuring the kernel. We're going to need to emerge the Gen2 sources. Emerge is the package management system for Gen2. And I'm also going to go ahead and use Gen kernel to configure the kernel. So let's go ahead and emerge both of those packages. Now, you can configure your kernel manually, and it's a much better idea, but hardware is so specific that it's difficult if you don't know what you're doing. So I'm just going to use gen kernel here to make a generic kernel with all the modules. It's similar to what most other distributions provide you, and, but it does take a long time to build. So that is one of the drawbacks for that. All right, now that we have the packages we need, we have to edit the ETC FS tab because Gen Kernel relies on the boot being correct. So our boot partition is dev SDA1. 
It's an EXT4 system. We'll use defaults and we'll put 0 and 2 in there. That is for the uh, dump and the FSEC. That's what it is. So now we have that, we can go ahead and build our kernel. So all we have to do is run gen kernel all and it will start building us a generic kernel. Now this is going to take a very long time to build, at least 30 minutes for me, uh, maybe longer. So I will be back when that is finished. Alright, now that the kernel is done installing, let's go ahead and install the firmware. All right, there we go. So that takes care of the kernel and the kernel firmware. And the next video, we'll work on configuring more of the system.